uh, Jesus. We get to do that for all of eternity, as Ty was saying. So we get a chance to get a warm up here on earth. And I'm excited to just be back in God's house tonight. I'm missing the fact that my church family isn't with me, but I trust that uh, you're bunkered down and ready to hear God's word tonight. Uh, one of the things that uh, they sang in that song is, is Jesus is mine in that first song, Jesus is mine. And praise God that if you know Christ, you can claim Christ as your own. Uh, a lot of people, they, they know the, the word of God, but so many don't know the God of the word. And when you know the God of the word, you can say something like, Jesus is mine. I've got a few announcements I'd like to give before we get started in the message for tonight. One is our drive-in church is this Sunday. Last Sunday, we had our first drive-in church. It was amazing. Uh, it was just one of the, the coolest church services I've ever been to. And uh, I'm pumped to get that going again this week. You never know with us. We might just do that all through summer. And uh, COVID or no COVID, it was, such a, it was just such a blessing. So, so join us for our drive-in church that's here this Sunday at 1030. Show up a little bit before that just so we can get everybody parked. Uh, we're, we're keeping everybody uh, spaced out separately and uh, safe. You stay in your cars. We're not, the church isn't going to be open to traffic, so um, just stay in your cars and let's worship together. Um, also, I want to throw out, too, our church has a framework of discipleship that goes on throughout the weeks. And it's just basically just a small group Bible study. Uh, a lot of them have been converted to like Zoom in like an online setting. So uh, if you have been interested or curious to get into a small group Bible study or discipleship, reach out to our church and let us know, or church family, reach out to us and let us know if we can get you plugged into a, uh, a discipleship group. We call them D groups. I want to also throw out that Friday, uh, not this Friday, but next Friday, uh, we're going to have a, a good Friday service. It's going to be a drive-in. So we have a drive-in this Sunday, and then next week on Friday night uh, at 6.30, Friday night at 6.30, we're having a drive-in uh, here at the church, and then, of course, Resurrection Sunday, a.k.a. Easter, uh, it'll be here, another drive-in uh, on Resurrection Sunday at 10.30 as well. If you know any children that uh, are in need of some food, uh, we have a food distribution program that takes place right here. It's going to go on tomorrow night from 4 o'clock to 5. So if you know some kids that need food, send somebody here. Uh, just tell us how many kids that you have that need a meal, and, and we'll, we'll bring it to your car. You don't even have to get out. It takes 10 seconds. You just tell us the number. We bring you uh, that many meals, and, and you can go on. Uh, also, uh, we typically receive prayer requests and things like that uh, tonight. So if you're watching and you have something that our, our, our leadership or our church can pray over, just type it in the comments and we commit to praying for anything that gets put in the comments tonight. Um, also, if you'd like to be put on an email list, we're putting together a prayer list email list. I don't care if you come to our church or not. If you're going to pray, we'll send you the email. So if you'd like to be put on our email prayer list, just shoot us your email. And maybe you can even type it in the comments and we'll get you plugged into that. And then lastly, before I get into the message, I just want to remind you, we have online giving available for those of you who are faithful at uh, tithes and offerings. And so you can go on our website, faithwaybc.com backslash giving, and you can give there. So... Before we begin, let's pray. God, we come to you tonight, humbled, God, to just be called your children, thankful to be a servant, just honored to be able to have eyes to read your word, ears to hear it, God, a heart to, to be passionate about it, Father, a mind to study it and, uh, and, and chew on uh, different doctrines and principles so that we can... Um, correct our life any way we need to based on your word. God, I pray that uh, you would be with us tonight. I pray that you would just have your way, Lord, that your spirit would, would, would move from house to house tonight as your word is preached, and that you would convict hearts in many different ways tonight. God, we ask all these things in your holy name. Amen. One of the things that, that I have been um, stressing through this God fast that we're in right now, especially through the midweek services, I keep saying pressing into the presence of God. And, and, and the, the challenge is that as we move 
through this God fast is to press into the presence of God. Blessings come from the God fast. Um, and, and, and there are uh, just a list of blessings that come from this God fast in Isaiah 58. Just one right after the other. Blessing after blessing after blessing after blessing that take place when you do God's fast, God's way. And especially when we're immersed in the presence of God continually. And that's why uh, we make this a long-term fast. We've been doing this fast, this God fast for, for several weeks now. We're going to continue it for a few more weeks. And, and the idea of this God fast isn't just to not, not eat certain food. The idea of the God fast is to fast from sin and then do good. So God's fast is stop sinning and go do good. So if we want God to flow to us, he has to flow through us. He flows to us. Uh, we're immersed in the presence of God and Along the way, we are doing good to everybody that we know. And, and we've gone through several um, of the fast, uh, facets already to lose the bands of wickedness. I hope you're still fasting from the, the sin that the Holy Spirit had convicted you of. To undo the heavy burdens. That's, that's the emotional weight. I challenge you to, to undo. Or in other words, shake off. To let the oppressed go free. That means to encourage the people that you might be discouraging. That you break every yoke. And, and that's, that's the challenge to be yoked up with Christ and let Him command things out of your life and, and not be yoked up with all these other things. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, bring the poor that are cast up the, to thy house, and when you see the naked, clothe them? We've, we've, we've been helping people in need. And so that has been some of the pieces of the fast that we've, we've covered so far. Tonight, I want to give you two other ones, okay? One I'm going to spend just a little bit of time on, and the other one I'm going to spend a lot of time on. So the first piece of the fast tonight is, is found at the end of chapter 58, uh, verse 7. It says, uh, hide not thyself from thine own flesh. And so what that is getting at is that if there are any kin, the flesh there is your kin, your family. Um, it could be immediate family. It could be distant family, but that all falls under the umbrella of flesh. And so if there's anybody in your family, anybody uh, close or distant family that you have uh, separated from uh, unscripturally, you've just kind of cut ties with them, maybe just because you got mad, they, they did something to you a long time ago, and you just cut, it might be a serious thing that took place, and you just cut ties with them. The idea here is to reunite with that family member or those family members. Maybe you haven't talked with your brother or your sister or your mom or your dad or whoever it is in years. This is the point in the God fast when it's time for you to get on your face before God and pray for wisdom on how to take the next steps to be reunited back with that family member that you've been separated from all these times. You know, this COVID-19 has really helped uh, those of us in our immediate families have more time together and, and build um, just a strong unit uh, among families because we're, in a sense, almost forced into the homes together. And this is great for, for parents, and especially a lot of dads who like to abdicate their role as a father over to the TV or Internet or tablet. And it's like we're letting our kids be be raised by these things and not us as fathers. And so, so don't hide from your own flesh. You know, it might just be, you know, you can't think of anybody else in the world that you've really caught a hard um, cut off completely, but maybe you're not investing much into the people that you need to be investing in. So that could be part of your God fast. Uh, and that's been, that's been aided even more by this COVID. So that's fast number one. And the second part I told you I was going to spend more time on is satisfying the afflicted soul, okay? So if you go in Isaiah 58, in verse 10, for example, and then I'm going to come back. Isaiah 58, 10, it says, If I draw thy soul out to the hungry, and then it says, Satisfy the afflicted soul. Then shall thy light rise in obscurity. And it, and it goes back to the blessings. But we see here the challenge is to satisfy the afflicted soul. Now when you go back in the beginning of the God fast in Isaiah 58, 3, in the middle of that verse, it says, Wherefore have we afflicted our soul 
and thou takest no knowledge. And so these guys, were, they were trying to do a fast. They were doing a fast the wrong way. And they said, how come we are afflicting our own souls, God, and you're not taking any knowledge? Down in verse 5, the second little segment there, it says, um, God's like, do, do you think that I really want you to afflict your own soul? He says in verse 5, is this such a fast that I have chosen a day for a man to afflict his soul? And, 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 and we see him ask this question. He's like, you know, like I'm seeing you guys afflict your soul. Do you think I want you to afflict your soul? Matter of fact, in verse 10, this is our God fast this week. Matter of fact, he wants us to satisfy the afflicted soul. So you can see the people that had it all backwards. They were afflicting their own souls when they should have been satisfying other people's afflicted soul. What is satisfying the afflicted soul? Like, what does that even mean? I ask myself this when I study the Bible and I, I read something. And maybe it's, a, maybe it's a, a word or a saying that we don't commonly say maybe these days. And, you know, I ask myself, well, what does that mean? Okay, like in layman's terms, what, what does that mean? And here's what satisfying the afflicted soul means, just plain and simple. It means to help or enrich the depressed. And so the depressed is the one who's afflicted. They're, they're depressed. They're, maybe you feel like an outcast or, or some, whatever has happened in their life, they feel depressed and we're called to help them, to enrich them, to enrich and to help the depressed. So this week's challenge is twofold. One is hide not yourself from your own flesh. So reunite back with a loved one. Use this pandemic, if you need to, to ignite an urgency to reunite with that loved one. And then number two, as I'm going to continue on with, is to help the depressed person. To help them. And I can tell you one thing that's for sure. There's plenty of depressed people out there right now, especially with things that are going on. There are plenty of people that feel afflicted that could really use our help. One of the things I know is this. If I've got $2, I can't give you $10. There's a lot of people who might need 10 bucks. But if you've only got two bucks, you can't give them 10 bucks. And so when the scriptures teach us that we are called to satisfy the afflicted soul, I can't do that if I'm not full with the Lord too. If I'm not satisfied myself, I can't help satisfy the afflicted soul. And so, so I'm going to give you steps to satisfy the afflicted soul tonight. And you're in luck because there's only two steps. Step one I'm going to spend the majority of the time on, and step two, just a little bit of time on. Step one, okay? Catch this. Steps for you to be able to help and satisfy the afflicted soul. Step number one is recharge your faith life. You need to recharge your faith life. You know, I don't care if, if you are in the depths right now. I've seen God just, just with almost just a snap of his finger turn somebody's situation right around by the power of the Holy Spirit and just completely change somebody's whole attitude, somebody's whole mentality towards something that they have been really struggling with. I've seen God just completely wake somebody up. So don't think that just because you've been in this pit for so long that you can't get out because through the power of God, I know you can. All things are possible. So you have to recharge your own faith life. And one of the reasons why you have to recharge your own faith life is because Romans 15, 1 says, We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak. In other words, the, before we can help the weak, we have to be strong. That's why I was saying you can't satisfy the afflicted soul unless you're satisfied yourself. We're like pitchers of water. I use this illustration all the time. I can't pour, uh, I can't pour a glass full of water if my pitcher's empty. I have to be satisfied. I have to be full. I have to be enriched myself. And so if we're going to satisfy the afflicted soul, we need to be strong in our faith, which may mean that you need to recharge your faith life. Back in Exodus, if you remember, when God's people had been put under bondage in Egypt, the Bible, I love this, this verse here, these couple verses. It says in Exodus 1, 11 and 12, Therefore they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burden. So, so the Egyptians set up taskmasters to afflict God's people. But then it says later in the next verse, but the more they afflicted them, 
the more they multiplied and grew. I love that verse. If, if, you, if you get there in your Bible, underline that. The more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And I love just thinking about that and spiritualizing that, that when we're in the situation we're in, which is a situation of affliction, and we, we're dealing with some really difficult times right now, and for, for all intents and purposes, you could say that we are under affliction right now. I love taking the thought that with Christ who is the one who's going to truly satisfy me, with him, I can multiply and grow through my affliction. I think this is the beginning of recharging your own faith life, is understanding what God has done in the past when, when the people who were coming down on God's people, under the affliction, they multiplied and they grew. And Lord willing, I, I, know, it's, I know it's Lord willing that in your life, under this affliction, I know you can grow in the Lord. Deuteronomy 26, they come back and recap this same thing. They come back and recap the situation of God's people in Egypt under this affliction, under this heavy bondage, and they just recap. And I want you to see how they word in uh, the, the recapping of that story. In Deuteronomy 26, 6 through 8, it says this, The Egyptians evil entreated us and afflicted us and laid upon us hard bondage. And look at this. When we cried unto the Lord God. You see that? When we cried unto the Lord God. They cried unto the Lord. They didn't just like mope around. They didn't just like gossip to one another. They didn't just like talk and sulk about how horrible life is. And all the things, all the current events that are taking place in our day. And, and you know, we can find ourselves doing this. Instead of doing that, they cried unto the Lord. The Bible says we cried unto the Lord God of our fathers. Whoop! Catch this. And the Lord heard our vo voice. We cried unto the Lord. The Lord heard our voice. A lot of people in our day are gossiping, bickering, fussing. And God's like, man, if you would just cry unto me, if you would just pray, if you just seek my face, I will hear. He says, we cried unto the Lord God of our fathers. The Lord heard our voice. Look at the next part. And he looked on our affliction. He looked on our affliction and our labor and our oppression. And the Lord brought us forth. Look, they're under hard bondage. They're under affliction. They cried unto the Lord. The Lord heard their voice. He looked down on their affliction and then he brought them forth. Does that sound like something that we would love to see in our nation today? We need to cry unto the Lord. He'll hear our voice. He'll look down on our affliction and he'll bring us forth. Out of Egypt with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arms. And the Bible says, and with great terribleness, which, which uh, you could say awesomeness. And with signs and with wonders. I think about, I, you know, when I read scriptures, I, in my mind, I like go back. I try to go back. Uh, to that place, and I try to think about what they were dealing with. I, I try to think about what were they crying out to the Lord? What were they saying? I wonder what they were praying. And the Bible says that in James 5.13, Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. All right, now catch this. You, you, make sure you know where I'm going with this. I'm talking about the God fast this week. Our, our mission this week is satisfy the afflicted soul. In order for me to satisfy the afflicted soul, the first step is for me to recharge my faith life. You need to recharge your faith life. And, and under the affliction that we're in, it begins with praying. Is any man afflicted? Let him pray. The prayer that the Egyptians prayed may have sounded a little bit like this, as the psalmist said in Psalm 90, 14. It says, Oh, satisfy us early with thy mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. It says, Satisfy us early with thy mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. That we, this is important, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad according to the days wherein the house afflicted us. I can see them praying this. God, we're afflicted. 
You have the ability to redeem us from this situation and not just redeem us from this situation alone, but to make us glad all of our days. So from this day forward, for every day that you give us on this earth, that you can make us glad. Proverbs 15, 15 says, all the days of the afflicted are evil. Catch this. But he that is of a merry heart hath a continual feast. He that is of a merry heart hath a continual feast. And I love that because it makes me think of, of this prayer being answered. God, we're in affliction. Make us glad all of our days. And then Solomon is like, I've seen this on the earth too. I've seen people under affliction, but I've seen people that have a merry heart even under affliction and all around affliction, have a continual feast. They live a continual feast. And this is key. This is key to a recharged faith life, is to be able to get to a point where you are, where you are glad, you have a merry heart. You're allowing God to fill you through the affliction. So you're living life in a continual feast. And if I'm living life in a continual feast, I got all kinds that I can give out to somebody else. I got all kinds of things I could pour into somebody else's life. I've got all kinds because I'm living in a continual feast. There's, there's a profound understanding that I think we need to see in Isaiah 63. Just a few chapters to your right from Isaiah 58. Look in Isaiah 63. There's a profound understanding that we need to notice, take, take note of about God's love and care for us. Look at verse 7, Isaiah 63, verse 7. The Bible says this. I will mention the loving kindnesses of the Lord and the praises of the Lord, according to all the Lord hath bestowed upon us and the great goodness toward the house of Israel, which he hath bestowed upon them according to his mercies and according to the multitude of his loving kindness. For he said, surely... They are my people, children that will not lie. So he was their savior. In all their affliction, in all their affliction, he was afflicted. And the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. And he bare them. He carried them all the days of old. So I want to go back. I want to just examine this text. In verse 7, it says, I will mention... The loving kindnesses of the Lord. I, I, love, I will mention it. I'm mentioning it right now. I'm talking about recharging your faith life. I'm talking about filling you up. You got to be full before you satisfy the afflicted soul. I will mention of the loving kindnesses of the Lord. If you, at this point in your life, if all you're doing is, is if the only thing coming out of your mouth is negative, you need satisfied. If nothing positive, if nothing godly, if, if nothing edifying, if nothing encouraging, if nothing of his loving kindness is coming out of your mouth, you need, you need to be satisfied. But guess what? God loves to satisfy. It's his desire because of his profound love and care for you to satisfy you. So let me just share in the light maybe something in your darkness tonight. I will mention the loving kindnesses of the Lord. He is loving. He's kind. He's good to us. I will mention the praises of the Lord. He's merciful, guys. According to all the Lord hath bestowed upon us. He's done so much. He's given us so much in our day. I know this is Old Testament. In our day, all that he's bestowed upon us, he's given us the love of Christ, which is the life of Christ. According to all the Lord hath bestowed upon us and the great goodness toward the house of Israel, which he hath bestowed upon them according to his mercies and according to the multitude of his loving kindnesses in that one verse in verse 7 it begins with his loving kindness and it comes back to his loving kindness it, it's 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 just like everything is sandwiched inside the loving kindness 
of God. He goes on to say in verse 8, For he said, Surely they are my people, children that will not lie. And so he was their Savior. In our day, I know this is Old Testament, but in our day, we're the children of God. We're the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. That's what Galatians tells us. We're the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. And it's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And so we see this God who is, who is pronouncing, He's saying, they're my children. I'm their Savior. But there's a key here that you need to see in verse 9, just to show of the profound care and love in His loving kindness towards His children as their Savior. The Bible says in verse 9, in all their affliction, He was afflicted. You mean to tell me when I'm afflicted, my father's afflicted? You better believe I'm telling you that right now. And God has given us, God has given me as a father the ability to understand that when my kids are truly hurt, I'm truly hurt. When they're truly afflicted, I'm afflicted. It hurts me. And here we have a God who his loving kindness is unsearchable. We make mention of it, but we can't completely understand it. And he says in all their affliction, in all our affliction, all of it, he was afflicted. And then, whoo, look at this next part. In verse 9, it says, And the angel of his presence saved them. And the angel of his presence saved them. Save them. What in the world? What, what is the angel of his presence? The angel of his presence is Jesus Christ. The angel of his presence. That word presence means before his face. That word saved means they were freed, delivered, and rescued. This angel of his presence that saved the people was the Messiah. Something about Jesus that you may not have thought about before. But Jesus, when he came to earth, he says, am I not about my father's business? But can I remind you something? Jesus, even before he came in the New Testament times, he's always been about his father's business. Even in the Old Testament times, he was about his father's business. And at this moment, the Bible says the angel of his presence, of God's presence, the angel of God's presence saved them. That's the Messiah. He's, this isn't a created angel now. This isn't an angel by nature. It's just an angel by office. An angel by office means he's a messenger. He was sent of God. As the word signifies. He was on an errand. The business was saving the people here. Why did they need saved? Because they were afflicted. And in their affliction, he was afflicted. And because he was afflicted, he sent the angel of his presence. There was somebody. <coughs> there was somebody that was before the face of God himself. The Messiah. That came and he, re he saved them. He rescued them in his love. The verse says, in his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. That's the idea of a kinsman redeemer. He ransomed them. He bare them. He carried them all the days of old. He carried them. You're like, I need carried, preach. Guess what? God loves to carry. God loves to bear. Cast all your care upon him. Take his yoke upon you. He did it for his people here. He's the same God. And so my challenge to you is, is do what God's people did. They prayed. They called. They cried out to the Lord. He heard. He saw their affliction. And then he came down. He sent. He sent the angel of his presence to come down there and rescue those people, to save those people. You know, God has always been a savior. The Messiah has always been a savior. I hope he's your savior. So, like I said, I'm going to spend the majority of the time on step one. In order for me to fulfill this God fast and satisfy the afflicted soul, I first have to be satisfied. 
And I believe that's how we do it. We just get on our face before God. We pray, we cry out. He hears our voice, he helps us. But then when we get ourselves full, step two is simple. With satisfied souls, we go satisfy. With satisfied souls, we go satisfy. Because he's satisfied me. He's filled me up. He's helped me in distress and depression. We go as, as completely full believers. We go satisfy. We go help. We go enrich somebody else who's depressed, who's empty. <clears throat> Something dawned on me this week, just in closing. Just today, really. I, I keep saying through this God fast that we need to press, press into his presence, press into his presence. And I, and I, you know, I just, I just keep thinking about the end when we find ourselves in his presence and just surrounded by God continually and he's guiding us and he's directing us. And like Isaiah 58 says, when we pray, he's answering us and all these things. And, you know, just, I kind of look at it as like, that's the end goal. But in reality, being in the presence of God is actually the journey through the God, this God fast, it's not just the end result. Yes, you still end in the presence of God, but the beauty of it all is that the journey is right in his presence. That's why we can stop sinning. That's why we can let God flow through us and help other people around us. That's why we have the heart to actually want to help the afflicted soul and not just help ourselves. And like I always say, I'm just a beggar who's found bread that is just trying to tell other beggars where they can find bread too. And I have found the sustaining, loving, rescuing Savior in my life. And I just want to tell you where you can find Him too. I'm thankful that He's filled me. He satisfied me. And I'm telling you, the way to be satisfied yourself is through, through the Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes, he rescued them in the Old Testament. But the way he rescues you and me was the moment at Calvary when he laid his life down on the cross to pay my sin debt. So I could have my sins forgiven. So I could have my slate wiped clean. And I come to him with a heart of faith and repentance and I turn towards him and I receive him. The Bible calls him the bread of life. And because I've received Christ, like they sang in Blessed Assurance, I can say Jesus is mine. And because he's mine and he satisfied me, I live life in a continual feast. I've got extra and I want to share it with you tonight if you're lacking or if you're depressed, you can be satisfied through the Savior. So I encourage you to do that tonight. If I'm going to pray in a moment. And when I pray, I'm going to be extending an invitation for two different kinds of people. One is to the Christian who is depressed, who needs enriched, who needs help. You haven't been satisfied in a long time. You're, you're listening to me say things like a continual feast and you're like, spiritually speaking, I got like half a loaf of bread and, to my name and that's it. Preacher, I need help. I'm telling you, I've, I found help in Christ. I found help in the Messiah. And I know you can too. And if you're a child of God, all you have to do is what God's people did. They cried out to him. He heard them. He looked down on their affliction and he helped them. He'll help you. So get busy praying. Get busy pressing into the presence of God and then you'll find yourself in the presence of God. So that's, that's my prayer challenge to the Christian, to the lost. You know, when I say lost, I mean to somebody who doesn't know that if they died, they'd go to heaven. You know, when, you, when, when I say that word, it means you don't know Christ as your Savior. If you died and, and you stood before God and he said, why should I let you into heaven? If you don't have an answer for that question, you're lost. And so if you're lost, 
Let me bring you to the table of the Lord this evening by inviting you to repent of your sins. Extend your faith to Jesus Christ as your Savior. He'll forgive you. He'll redeem you. He will fill you up when you get saved. And so let's pray. If you'd like to be saved tonight, pray this with me. Lord, I need a Savior. I am empty. I'm empty. But I believe that you died on that cross for me. Lord, I need a Savior. Forgive me of my sins. I believe you rose from the dead. And I believe you have the power to raise me up again. Save me tonight. Right now. If you prayed that prayer tonight, I would love to know. Reach out to us, comment, send us a message. Let us know that you did that. We want to be along, we want to be right there by your side through your journey. Now let me pray for my brothers and sisters in Christ. As we close. Lord, so many of my brothers and sisters in Christ are struggling right now. Depressed. Empty. Lord, I pray that you would remind them that you live inside of us. You're the bread of life. You desire to fill us. Lord, maybe maybe you would just urge those that are really struggling, convict them to get on their knees and cry out to you. And stop crying out to the neighbors or crying out online or crying out here, crying out there, that we cry out to you, God. And then we would look to you, God. So you would look on us in our affliction and that you would reach down with that outstretched arm, with that strong arm, Lord, and you would rescue those who need rescued. Satisfy them so they can satisfy others, God. Let us use this time of distress that we're all in as an opportunity for us, God, to be your hands and feet in this world as beggars who have found bread that are just trying to help somebody else do the same. Help us, Lord. Guide us this week. Use us this week. In so many different ways. We ask all these things in your holy name.